and one of the glory days when the Philippines ruled basketball in Asia. In August of this year, the quest to restore the country's pride in a sport loved by Filipinos will happen in Manila with the hosting of the Asian Basketball Championships. Today, national coach Chop Reyes announced the 17-man training team of the Philippines. Is it the best team we can field? Can it compete with Asia's best? And joining us tonight is one of the country's true legends in sports casting. He has covered the rise and fall of the Philippines in Asian basketball, Mr. Ronnie Nathaniels. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> sir, when was the last time we won a major title for basketball for Asia? Was it in 1973 when we hosted the ABC? Right. And 1973 when we had a team with Adonado Jaworski, Gidabin, Mon Fernandez, uh, Robert Jaworski, and then of course Francis Arnaiz. It was a good strong team, Rizal Memorial, and I think we beat South Korea in the final. So after that, what caused our failure to win titles and compete in other major events like the Olympic Games or the World Basketball Championships? Well, one of the reasons most people say is that because the PBA was formed and the amateurs uh, broke up and the PBA got all the best players, but that's not really correct. I think the reason is that other countries advanced, like China was not on the scene then in, in the 70s, but now they are a very, very strong competitive force. China, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, those countries have now developed and they've learned a lot and many of uh, better players study in the United States, play in collegiate basketball, go back to their home countries and represent uh, the, the, the different countries in the region. So we have a tough time because of this. So the team announced by Coach Chot Reyes, eight were members of the RP team, which won the Jones Cup last year to include naturalized player Marcus Douthit and most valuable player L.A. Tenorio. Is it a competitive team given the fact that most of the teams have the height advantage? Well, this is a competitive team. When you think of the fact that Junma Fajardo is, is a massive player with a great future, and I'm glad that San Miguel Corporation released him to the national team, and then you've got Slaughter, you've got Japet Aguilar in that lineup. So it's a solid team up front. Uh, we will not, we will lose a little in terms of height, uh, in terms of the number of really strong people, but we've got players like Arvin Santos who may not be that tall but he can really leap with the best of them so it's a good solid team I think it's a good mm -hmm. solid team and I think uh, a couple of people need to be given credit for this mm -hmm. uh, one the PBA commissioner who was resolute in his determination to get the best team possible mm -hmm. uh, Robert Nunn chairman of the San Miguel Corporation you know very often they say that San Miguel Corporation is against this and it's against mm -hmm. that but that's not really true mm -hmm. Mr. Nunn played a very crucial role and the PBA board rallied around him to give us the best possible team. Sir, now looking um, back at the height advantage, is speed and versatility enough to counter the height advantage of the other teams? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, the most important thing is shooting, the ability to shoot. The Koreans have often beaten China because of good shooting from the outside. We've had teams that have played China and given them a hard time before, before because we shot well and we had the speed. Now with little guys like L.A. Tenorio, for instance, mm -hmm. who's got tremendous speed and shooters like Fonacier, Gary David, and Gabe Norwood is a great asset to this team because he can play the point and is a tall point guard. So we have a team where players can play multiple positions and are very versatile and I think that's going to be the strength of this team and most importantly it's going to be here at home. Mm. So we've got the crowd behind the team that should lift their spirits. So with that in mind, who are the teams that we, sh we should fear most and what makes them better or not? Well, we fear China on more than just basketball, but uh, China is a very, very strong team. I, uh, Iraq is also a very strong team. Iran, they got some really solid seven-footers. And of course, teams like Lebanon, Qatar. You see, the problem for us is that we don't cheat. We don't cheat. So uh, yes. uh, Some countries import players from Africa give them passports, and they're in the lineup. It's as simple as that. So now looking at the list, there are no superstars really when you compare this team with the likes of Jorski, Adornado, Mon Fernandez. How different are they from these players? Well, if you begin to uh, subscribe to the fundamental theory that basketball is a team game, then you understand why Chotre is at seven players from the Token Text team in this side, because 
token takes text won a championship by teamwork simple teamwork they had superstars who buried their personal egos for the benefit of each other and for the good of the team and that's the spirit that this team needs uh, in the FIBA Asia Championships. So only three will qualify for the World Championships. Do we have a fair chance of making it and uh, again will the home court advantage make a difference? Well the crowd will make a difference. I don't know whether the home court advantage in terms of the refereeing will make a difference. I don't think so. The referees normally will call it fair and square but the crowd will give our players a boost and you know when you have thousands of people the tendency is to, to lift your spirits and play better. I think we have a really good chance of qualifying. I don't think we'll be champions because that's a little too much to aspire for, but we can. We can dream, can't we? But I think we'll be in the top three and we'll go to the World Championships in Brazil. I hope so. Mm. Sorry, final word from you, sir. Uh, final uh, fearless forecast on the upcoming games. Well, I, I think we'll be in the top three. We will qualify, but I think before we go, I'd just like to thank uh, the PBA, uh, congratulate Commissioner uh, Chito Salud, congratulate uh, Chairman Robert Nunn and congratulate Mr. Manny Pangalina for putting this all together with a certain driving passion that helped us to win the right to host this championship. Sir, uh, another question, sir. What needs to be done um, by um, Coach Totres to make this team um, much better, more equipped, um, like a well-oiled machi machine for the upcoming FIBA Asia Games? Well, the players have to understand their roles on this team. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, I was a little surprised that he picked Japet Aguilar because he played for, for Talk and Text and he sat on the bench for a long time and went back home. Now he's giving Japet Aguilar a chance. Uh, former coach Raiko Toroman said Japet Aguilar is probably the best player the Philippines could ever had, but he didn't make it. There were so many other things on his mind. A player has to listen to his coach and do what the coach asks him to do and do what he needs to do with the rest of the team to move forward. Now, if he can ingrain that in players like Japet Aguilar and Fahad, and I think Fahad is a tremendous player, I think we'll have a real good shot. So what needs to be done to minimize the height advantage of the other teams that will be playing? Well, uh, if he move well, like doubt it, moves really, really well around the paint. Uh, Slaughter is big, but he's a little slow. Japet Aguilar is very athletic, so is Arvin Santos. So I think we can, we can, with our speed, our agility, and the innate uh, basketball savvy of the Filipino, I think that should prevail against the height of the opposing teams. Okay, on that note, thank you very much for joining us tonight. That was Mr. Ronnie Nathaniels. Thank you. One of the future legends of Philippine sportscasting. Thank you, sir.